Hello, hello, and welcome back to Girl We Gotta Talk. I'm your host, Elena Jakes. You guys, we have made it to season five. Welcome. If you are new here, welcome back. If you have been listening for some time now, you guys, I've missed this so much. It's crazy. I think for a while, I just was trying so hard to keep it consistent and my life was just like not allowing me to do that. So every couple of episodes, I'd be like, hey guys, I'm back. So sorry. And then I would go MIA for the next couple of weeks and do it all over again. Um, and so I thought, you know what? I just need to take the the break that I typically take. I think I was just trying to push through that. But we are back and better. And there's so much to catch you guys up on. It's actually crazy. I don't even remember really what I've said and what I haven't said to you guys leading up to like the, I guess, the disappearance before season five started. But um, we have a lot to kind of talk about. And, and I just have a lot of things that have changed in the last couple of months. Um, and gosh, it just feels so good to be like talking on the mic again. So thank you guys for bearing with me. I am so, so grateful for all of you. Um, and I just, I'm just looking forward to the next season. I think like for a little bit there, I had what we would call a burnout. Um, and that's so normal. And I definitely have struggled with it over the last couple of years with the podcast. Not to say that I hate the podcast or, you know, stopped liking it by any means, but you know, it's like writer's block. You kind of just like hit a wall for a second and it's hard to get out of that little, that headspace, I guess. And I just wanted to really take this break um, leading up to this season for myself to be able to come back and produce good content. Um, because at the end of the day, there's no point in just putting out podcast episodes where like I'm not pleased with them and then I don't want them to like not be fun to listen to and that whole thing. So I really try to like take the time during this break to really just like chill, like erase my brain for a little bit, like just swipe it clean And I think when you do that, you allow like the creative juices to flow again and you let that kind of just come back to you naturally. And that's exactly what happened. So, um, we're back and I'm so, so excited for this season. I have so many, so many episodes lined up already. So many guests I'm going to be talking to, I've already talked to, I'm just excited. I'm excited. I also just, um, and I guess I'll kind of get into this in a second, but It's just going to be nice to be back on the mic, like I said, be able to like have these meaningful conversations with people, whether that's, you know, women in business or just deep conversations with friends or guests or whatever that may be. Just having like genuine conversation on this show is going to be so fun and I've missed it. So yeah, oh, this feels so great. I love this. But yeah, what I had mentioned earlier was that you guys have missed out on a lot. I've done a lot since the last time we had a podcast episode drop, and I think we kind of teased it, my boyfriend and I, um, in that last episode. So if you haven't heard that one, feel free to go listen to it or don't. It's okay. I'll just recap it here. But my boyfriend of five years um, almost six years, which is actually crazy. I don't feel like old enough to have that long of a relationship, but nevertheless, uh, my boyfriend of five or six years, um, and I have basically been doing a long distance relationship for pretty much the majority of our dating relationship. And we met in college, brief run through. We met in college my junior year and, um, dated, um, you know, those two years in college. And then he graduated the year after me. So a couple of trips back to my (laughs) college before COVID hit and did some long distance through that. And then we both are from different towns, um, in Virginia. So we had like a two and a half hour drive from each other. So even when we weren't at school, um, we were traveling back and forth to see each other. Then, um, our jobs took us to different cities, again and we just continued to do the long distance um, relationship and honestly looking back it's interesting because I don't think we ever really questioned what we were doing we kind of and we've I think we've kind of talked about this him and I now but we are very independent people and we're very career driven people and so I think finding somebody that's similar minded in that way 
um, and getting into relationship with them actually makes things easier, like long distance, because it's not even a question of, okay, well, I'm going to do this because this is important to me and you're going to do that because that's what you want to do, but we're going to make this work regardless. And I think a lot of people look at long distance as like scary and not realistic. And believe me, it was brutal at times, but through the years, I think we got better and better at it. And, um, you know, there's a lot of factors that go into long distance, but ultimately, um, I think we, We can pat ourselves on the back now because we made it through and we finally got a place together, moved to the same city, and we've been living together now for the past couple of months. So we moved in like the end of the summer and it's been great. I have had so much fun. It's been, uh, I will say like the first couple of weeks were really funny. I was talking to my friends that live here too and they live with their significant others and um, my friend Nicole, shout out, I'll bring her on the podcast again. I think it's been way too long, but my friend Nicole was like, you guys don't like bicker or fight. Like, what do you mean? I'm like, no, it's so great. It's, this is like the first weekend. I'm like, no, and we don't really do that regardless, but, um, yeah, I don't know. And shortly after that, it was like, we were bickering about just stupid stuff in the apartment, like nothing like a big fight by any means, but just like the little, like back and forth. And so then I saw her after, you know, a couple of days and I was like, all right, I think you jinxed it. Or maybe you just knew it was coming because it's just inevitable when you live with somebody. So we got over that like one to two week hump of like, okay, we are in the same place 24 seven. Uh, we need to figure out how to do this. So no, but it's been so fun. We've really like enjoyed making our little apartment, our happy place and like decorating it more. So me decorating it, um, really making it like a home for us and It's just nice. I think I've just been so used to like, I've been living with my friends for a couple of years now, which you guys know. Um, Before that, I lived with my parents and before that I had roommates in college. So I've just, I've always been living with like multiple people. It's really peaceful here. I have to say like living with one person is so nice, so relaxing. And it's just like your own space. It's been fun. It's been really fun. And, um, We'll have him on. We'll do an episode, I'm sure, in the in the coming future, just to talk about the different dynamics of long distance to roommates, um, and just like that whole dynamic shift. But it's been um, it's been really nice, and I feel like it's a reward after what we've done the past couple of years together. So um, that's like been the biggest life change. I moved out of my house, um, in the DC area with living with three girls and that I have to say, I'm so glad. I think I've talked about this before with them too, but I'm so glad I did that. I feel like it's so important to be able to live with your friends and be young and be fun and just like have that sort of freedom and kind of grow on your own and grow with your friends, I think is really a cool experience. And so I'm always going to look back at that like very fondly and have like such great memories. And, um, yeah, we all kind of just, we came to the conclusion. Well, for me personally, I was like, guys, I love you guys all, but I have to, like, I need to live with my boyfriend. This is crazy now. Like it's been five years, it's time. Um, and so they were like, yeah, duh, of course. And so we all just kind of like made the decision to all leave and we all kind of went our separate ways and I'm not far at all. I'm like two hours away from there, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's crazy that so much has changed. And I think for a while there, I was like really emotional. Like I, and I'm always, I think I, looking back, I'm always kind of like, I don't think I'm great at big change like that when it comes to like people, because I remember, and this is same but different, but I remember my senior year of college just being so emotional about leaving. I I didn't want to leave my friends. Um, You know, we had all lived in this house together in college and I was so close to all of my other friends, just like four minute drives away or like a walk down the street to your friend's house or your friend's apartment and not having that was so scary to me. And um, that's kind of how I felt like with this move where I was like, oh, this is going to be such a change. It's going to be really interesting. And honestly, like it's been the best thing ever. So I love it so much. Um, TJ and I are just having a ball. It's been great. But yeah, we should definitely do an episode. Well, I'll have him on and we can just kind of like talk about the different dynamics and maybe chat about um, like how to live with your significant other because 
we, I think we're very intentional about how we treat each other regardless, but also just like in our apartment and how we've kind of like shifted gears a little bit into, we don't want to be roommates, but finding that like comfortability with each other to be able to like really communicate certain things. And I don't know. And just like really creating like this life together. So anywho, we'll have him on to chat more, but that was probably the biggest change so far. I've been living in this new city for a couple of months now and I've really been liking it. And it's so funny. Like now I feel like I don't necessarily have to use maps or like ways everywhere I go. I'm really starting to figure out where I'm at. <laughs> Uh, baby steps and just like discovering new places TJ and I have started doing like a Friday night date night um, where we try a new restaurant and it's just fun like kind of learning and exploring a new city is really cool and uh, yeah I I also it, it's super interesting like coming from a house with all these girls and like all your friends are in the area and then like coming here where I do have friends here which is super nice and also a plus of why I wanted to move here as well, but coming from like such a hectic life to coming to a new city where you're like, all right, kind of got to start over. Like, let's figure this one out. So it's been really interesting, super fun. And then with that, basically, um, if you don't know, I own my own business. I actually don't think I've talked about this too much on the podcast, which is really interesting. I feel like I should have. Um, That was like a big life change. Actually, I may have briefly. But basically, um, I, back in January of 2022, I officially started my, my business called Purpose Media. Purpose Media, we do social media management, um, videography, just like social media marketing, media consulting, and that has been sort of a passion of mine since college. I worked at a marketing, I worked at a marketing job for about two and a half years and had some opportunities come along that really just, yeah, it just gave me the the motivation to be like, okay, marketing, that specific role isn't really for me. I think I'm just gonna like do what I love. And I had been doing Purpose Media on the side for months at that point, almost a year at that point, um, just as like sort of a side hustle and um, officially went, I guess, went for it uh, that summer. So yeah, it's been really fun. I love it. I love owning my own business. I love being my own boss. Um, there are definitely pros and cons to it for sure. Like I think socializing with people in an office was nice, but I don't know. This just gives me like a different fire, if that makes sense. So I've been doing that and um, trying to work with some people in my new city, which is exciting. So yeah, I mean, if you're in the area or you're just, honestly, I can do a lot of stuff remote, but if you're interested and you have a company or a brand that just needs some social media help or promo video or just anything of that nature, feel free to email me. Um, you could DM me or just message me on the podcast as well. Um, I'd love to chat and help you out. So yeah, that's been fun for sure. It is interesting though. Like I just like work by myself. There are some days that like I won't even talk to people, which is weird unless I have calls or like recordings and stuff. Um, I'll go like a whole day without talking to somebody and then TJ will get home and he'll be like, hi. And I'm like, whoa, I think this is like the first time I spoke a word. It's crazy. Um, So I just such an interesting shift, but loving it so far. Um, But yeah, definitely let me know if you need any social media help, any video help, um, media consulting, anything like that. So I guess moving on, just wanted to like kind of make this sort of a catch up episode of like what I've been doing, what has been going on in life, um, and then like what's to come with the podcast and all of that fun jazz. So I have, I think I talked about it in earlier episodes in season four, but, um, I am, well now I'm 26. Oh gosh. I turned 26 like a couple weeks ago, last week, I guess, um, I'm 26 years old and this is basically the age where all your friends start to get engaged. All your friends start to have kids. It's crazy. Um, And it's really interesting. I was just talking to my friend yesterday where I was like, I feel like we're 18 still. Like, yeah, I'm technically 26. That's what it says on my birth certificate. But at the end of the day, like I still feel like I'm like 18, 19 years old um, just trying to figure things out. Like it's so... It's so weird to think that you're, I don't know, because even when 
I think to, you know, that point in my life or even younger, like I always thought about the year of 25. Like, oh, when I'm 25, I'm going to have this, this, and this, and I'm going to live in a big house. And like, you know, you you kind of have all these ideas when you're younger, obviously, um, and like big dreams for yourself. And uh, now and like being at that age, it feels bizarre and it feels wrong. Um, and I remember being in high school and always thinking like, oh, like the seniors in high school, they're so old, so mature, so big. And then I was a senior in high school. I was like, what a lie. Like, I don't feel like that at all. Like this is, we're all just winging it. Like it's very interesting. Um, But anyways, being at this age, you know, you have a lot of weddings. A lot of your friends are celebrating, you know, having a baby, getting married, getting engaged, moving to a new house, blah, 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 new jobs. I mean, it's a very busy um, age. And I have been so lucky and so grateful to um, attend a couple of weddings this summer. We had three back-to-back, which I thought was so funny. Um, And one was my friend Carrie, who I lived with in college. So to like see her get married was very surreal. Um, And it was a beautiful wedding. And she had dated this guy in college. So just to like see how far they've come is really, really special. And like to be there to celebrate was like amazing. And she was oh my God, stunning. The moment that a bride comes out, like for the first time, like to walk down the aisle is something I can not even like describe. It is sickening. It is, she was stunning. I just was like uh, so emotional, just like thinking like, you know, everything kind of flashes at once. Like all your memories with that person just like flash back at you. And you're like, wow, like I'm at her wedding. It's crazy. So that was really special. And the next weekend we had, um, some friends from college that TJ has really kept in touch with and been really close with. And that was another wedding where I was like, this is so emotional. Like the groom was just super emotional. The second the ceremony even started, like all of his family walked down and he was just like, oh man, he just lost it. And it was so sweet to see. Um, and the bride was stunning. Like again, just like that initial moment of them walking down is just insane. Um, and then last, the last wedding that we had was in Italy. So a little bit more of a lift, um, cause the other ones were local, but we, uh, we could not miss this wedding. This is, um, TJ's best friend, JT, which I think is hilarious. Their names are literally just the letters reversed. Um, yes, that's true. Uh, but we had his wedding in Italy and it was stunning as you can imagine. And we just were like, you know what, we're going to make a trip of this because like, why wouldn't we, we're going to Italy. So we ended up doing Rome for two days that we went to the venue for two days. And then we went to Florence for the last two days. It was ridiculous. We fell in love with Italy. Like, I don't know how you couldn't fall in love with Italy. It is beautiful. The people there are amazing. The food there is insane. Um, the wine, like just everything, the buildings, the architecture, the, like we were in Tuscany for a day, like stunning Tuscan Hills, like unbelievable. Felt like it was fake. So magical. So great. Bride and groom looked amazing. This was like a smaller wedding. So I really liked the concept of a smaller wedding um, because I I felt like it was just way more intimate. Everyone was like talking with everybody. Um, I feel like the bride and groom probably had an easier time just like mingling with everybody. And like, I don't know, it was it was really cool. Um, And it was just such a great trip. TJ and I have never traveled abroad together. I've barely traveled abroad, to be honest. So This was like a really fun experience for us. And we traveled with some friends basically the whole week we were there. We were in like a group of six of us and oh my God, you guys. Okay. So I have to say, first of all, I think that the people in Italy are so freaking nice. Like, especially coming in as like a foreigner, not being able to fully speak the language, their patience and their kindness, I think is in incredible like we we are so grateful for that and also so grateful that like everybody can speak English like I think it's insane that like we because okay I will say this I can speak Spanish enough to like fully have a conversation and understand somebody but that's about it and that's because like I did I took Spanish my whole life growing up and through college 
But there are a lot of people that don't know how to speak any language. And I think that's crazy, especially because when you travel abroad, like everybody can speak a little English. Like, I just think that's, we need to do better here because if we cannot speak any language but our own, but everybody can speak ours, like we should work on that. But I will say they were super nice. Um, everywhere we went, people were super accommodating, um, really helpful. And it was great. It was just like a great experience. But it was rough to start off because we got to Rome at 7 a.m. Um, their time. We like took a flight. I think our flight was like 4 p.m. here. We landed about 7 a.m. there. Um, and typically like Airbnbs and hotels, you can't really check in until like 3 or 4 p.m. And that's typical. And so leading up to the, you know, the flight or whatever, the couple days before traveling, I had messaged the Airbnb host and I asked if we could potentially um, check in at like eight. Um, And he was like, you know, I can see what I can do. It just kind of depends on like when the people leave before you, but I'll check and I'll let you know. So we were hopeful, but unfortunately those people weren't going to leave until they had to, which was about four. Um, And that just punched me in the gut because then that made me realize that we had to fully like stay up. First of all, we had to stay up and be awake until like bedtime their time because then that messes you up for like the rest of your trip. Um, even though we were exhausted and nobody slept on the plane, but he did let us like drop our luggage off. So we dropped our luggage off and this, like it was an apartment. Um, and they had like the storage closet. I don't know, but we all lugged our stuff in there and we had all of our check bags and our carry-on stored it in this storage closet and then basically roamed around Rome for about the rest of the day. So we probably dropped our stuff off around like 9 a.m. and we got back at 3, um, just exhausted. Oh my God, exhausted. Like we were trying our absolute hardest to stay awake. We had gone to like multiple restaurants, gotten drinks, gotten food. We got dessert at one place, like... We were just like, we ha- and we obviously went sightseeing, which is great. We went to like the Trevi Fountain and like the Pantheon and we did, you know, a couple of things walking around. Um, we didn't let the day go to waste, but we were, by the end of it, we were like dragging. Um, we looked like zombies. And so we got to the Airbnb. He let us in like 45 minutes earlier than we had thought. So that was great. And um, we, you guys, uh, the way that like this gave us so much so much anxiety so originally um I had booked like the Airbnb and we had six people with us and uh you know typically you put everybody's name in and I'm 99% sure that's what I had to do and so when we dropped our luggage off earlier in the day they were like hey when you come back here we just need to see everybody's passports okay so then we're like of course of course We get there and, you know, we're showing our passports. At this point, like, I think I have negative three brain cells. Um, We are literally on the, like, verge of passing out. We are so tired. They're taking photos of our passports just to verify, blah, 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 understandable. And we, I, for starters, start to notice that they're talking now in Italian to each other. So basically the woman who had greeted us earlier that morning to put our luggage away was a like, really nice lady. Um, I don't know her name. And when we got there that afternoon, when they were taking photos of our passports and like just checking us in to give us the keys, she was there. Her son was there. That was the guy taking photos of the passports. And then like, I guess her daughter, who by the way, was the most beautiful freaking person I've ever seen in my whole life. It was very humbling. Um, and so the three of them are there. All six, six of us are standing there while he's taking these photos and they start to talk in Italian to each other. So I'm like, I hate that. Like that, that is giving me anxiety because like, what are they saying? Well, I could kind of pick up a couple words and notice that they were saying how many of them, how many of us there were. And so I had told our group leading up to it, like that day that we had flown in, I saw that it said five people maximum. Well, we had six. So we are panicking because now we think there's there. Obviously, they're counting that there are six of us and we are freaking out because we were like, we are in a foreign country that what if they say, like, you guys lied 
you guys are done. Like you guys are not staying here. And then we don't have a place to stay. Like I was just going to the extremes, like the worst case scenario. Um, and so I heard like, they're talking about how many, of how many there are of us. The host looks at me and he's like, there are six of you here. And I'm like, yeah, there are six of us. Is that like, a, is that going to be a problem? Cause like two of them were going to sleep on the couch. There were two bedrooms. We're all couples. So one, you know, two of the couples are in the bedroom. One of the couple will be, um, one of the couples will be on the couch. And it was a huge couch. Honestly, looked amazing. But anyways, we were, you know, we had already decided that like, whatever. We had discovered the five people maximum literally hours before this. So we were like, we're just going to see how this plays out. So them calling us out, we were panicking. I was like, oh my gosh, yeah, there are six of us. Like, is that okay? And he was like, well, no, because you only booked it for one person. And I was like, what? No, I didn't. Why would I do that? And by the way, the price would not reflect paying for one person. So I was like, no, 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 no. And so then he was like, okay, well, you need to pay the city tax. And I'm like, the city tax? He's like, the journey tax. I'm like, the journey tax? What is this man saying? Now I'm freaking out. Like, is there a language, like the language barrier is like ruining this. I don't know what he's, I can't understand what he's saying. Like, we're all looking around with like zero brain cells. Like, what is happening? And he can see the panic. I mean, he, he recognized the panic as soon as we, as soon as he said that we're all looking like white as a ghost. He's like, no, 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 it's okay. You can stay here. It's not a problem, but you just have to pay the city tax, an extra fee. I'm like, oh, okay, what's the fee? And he says $350 per person per night. I just about died on site. Like $350 per person per night when we have already paid probably that amount per person already. Um, so I'm freaking out. I am feeling like this is my fault. I uh, There are six of us standing here wanting to sleep, haven't slept in about 24 hours. We might not even have a place to stay now. Like, um, we're going to be broke, broke. He was like kind of shocked at our reaction to that price. So I was like, oh my God, we're getting scammed. Like the mom standing there, the daughter, they're all looking at us like, what is this big deal for? Like, you're like, pay it up. And so he types it into his calculator and he does the three comma five zero. And I'm just seeing the three five zero. Like I'm still just seeing three five zero. I'm freaking out. I'm in panic mode. I'm white as a ghost. And then finally, TJ sees the comment in it and he's like, Elena, it's only $3, like $3.50, like three euros per person per night, seven bucks a night. It's okay. And I was like, oh my fucking God. I just about like, I could have kissed the Airbnb host. I was like $3.50 a person. So seven euros each. He's like, yeah, seven euros each. Oh my God, you guys, I felt Oh my God, so many emotions, embarrassment. I'm also just so exhausted. I can't even think straight. I am relieved. I am like everything, every emotion I am feeling right now. He was like, you just need to give me that before you guys leave and like check out. Just like if you have cash that works, whatever. So I was like, oh my God, that's totally fine. We're all, we all like perk up. We're like, oh my God, of course, of course. Like no problem at all. Thank you so much. And they're like, yeah, yeah, no, you're good. And they're still like, what the fuck was the confusion? Like you guys are idiot Americans, right? So they leave. I think I literally, yeah, I dropped to the floor. Like I could kiss the floor at that point. Um, we we're all just like laughing at ourselves because we just went through like just every emotion possible and like had a 20 minute conversation about paying seven bucks each. Like, oh my God. So we finally get settled and we just try to like relax and just try to keep ourselves awake. To be honest, we ordered food that night and we went to bed at like, I think at like eight 30, we were so fucking tired, but God, the way that that trip started off, you guys insane, absolutely insane. So glad it worked out. And they were actually really, really sweet. Like, um, he gave me a tour of the apartment it was super nice. They had like a lot of like food and drinks for us, coffee there. And, um, all, like overall they are great people and they obviously they let us like keep our stuff in their apartment building like it was it was all good like it was a great experience but like oh my god those just like 20 minutes of panic were insane and once we got over that hump we were good but oh my god it was an, it was crazy um and we just had so many like little things like that happen to us over the trip which were just like traumatizing the moment but like I think 
I think it's been long enough now that it's funny. Um, another insane story is when we uh, were at the train station in Rome, we needed to catch our train. And this was our first experience like at this specific train station. Um, and our, honestly, our first ex- train experience, just basically the whole trip. So we had... <laughs> tried to figure out where our train was based off of like the big board, you know, on the wall. Um, They only tell you like 10, 15 minutes before your train is supposed to arrive, like what platform to go to. So we had just been like basically standing there until we saw it. And then as soon as we saw it, we were like, okay, we have to just like be really quick about it. We can't miss this train. So we go over to it. Luckily, it was like the first platform, um, which was basically right in front of us. Um, So we were like, oh, perfect. This is great. And we're standing there and we kind of realize like there's not a lot of people around us. We look up, there's like some guy cleaning off that train already. So we were like, oh, maybe they're just, this is how they do it. They're just cleaning it. And then we're about to like get on. Well, he looks at us and he shoes us away. He's like, go, go. We're like, what, what? Mind you, we each have our checked bags. So like, For me personally, mine was, I think, 47 pounds. Um, And then I have my carry-on, which just for a visual is the Bay's um, like weekender bag where you like put the shoes in the bottom. It's like a little like, like Miss Doubtfire sort of situation. And that's like stacked on top of my bag. And everyone else has their respective like backpacks and checked bags and stuff. Um, And so we're like, wait, wait, what does he mean go? Like, where are we supposed to go? What do you mean? And so then we're like looking at the train ticket. We're like, where are we in the right place? Like, I'm pretty sure we are. We start asking people, like some people don't speak English. Now we're kind of freaking out because like we're just, we're noticing the time is ticking. Like now we have like five minutes before our train leaves the station. But we're like, where is the train then? Like, are we in the completely wrong spot? So then finally someone helps us and he's like, you have to go all the way down there. And he points and we look down and it is like, two football fields away from us I'm not even like being dramatic and I'm like what that's like it's like a completely separate train track from the train station like all the trains in the train station are lined up it's like one two three four all these platforms you know like a typical train station this one is literally football fields away like it's not even a part of the same station we're like are you kidding me So one of our friends, Bethany, looks back at us and she's like, we have to run. We have two minutes. So we start sprinting. And like there are, again, so many emotions, so many like feelings happening right now. I am stressed. I am panicked. I am tired. I am like just scared that we're going to miss this. And also I'm feeling like determined because like I have to fucking sprint. Like we got to go. So adrenaline kind of kicks in, but because of the luggage, like we are not moving that fast. So we all thought like we were sprinting. I think that was like slow motion running. Um, And we're doing our best. We're going, we're going. And I'm not kidding you guys. This was so fucking far away, like football fields away. So we are like, we keep thinking I'm there. We're there. We're there. We're not there. We're still not there. Keep running, keep running, keep running. So now I'm in the back of the pack because I just tripped over my freaking suitcase. The whole thing topples over because that that carry-on is on top it is top heavy it topples over I almost fall over it um and my friend Torin looks back he's like just he's literally like he's like a dad he's like just checking on me like he kept turning around like being like you good you good I'm like I'm doing my best but like this shit is so heavy that like I can't even move um And I like looked to my right after I, or I looked to my left after I had gotten up and grabbed the suitcase and like tried to get it back on the wheels. And I just see this whole family sitting at the train station, just watching me. I'm like, that is perfect. So we are running, we are running, we are running. Finally, like the first couple people of our group are throwing their bags into the train, like, and then just like sprinting on it. And so Torn and I pull up and we are just chucking the bags and like my foot steps onto the train station. By the way, the whistle has blown now. I'm at, like, I'm right in front of the door. The whistle's blown. My foot comes up from the step and the doors close immediately. Like, I had made it. We had made it with, like, not even a second to spare. It was so stressful. I am dripping sweat. Uh, I can't breathe. I'm feeling a lot of emotions, like the adrenaline, but also, like, my chest is so tight because I was, like, so panicked and anxious. 
Um, we all just look at each other like, what the fuck just happened to us? And then it's like the relief sets in. But my God, what a humbling experience. Like I wish, part of me like wishes, wishes I will never see this footage, but like I think it would be, again, now it's funny, then it wasn't. But now it might be funny to see the footage of that. Like I think it would be hilarious also to see my luggage fall and then me trip over it and then me have to get it up and then everyone looking back being like what is she doing and I'm like I'm doing my best um I think is like hilarious also just like the people the family watching me like all of it I think it'd be really funny now in the moment it was absolutely terrifying and then I thought another thought I had was like I'm gonna Torn and I are not even gonna make the train or like what if it's just me that stays here and then I'm like just by myself oh my god it was crazy you guys so Rome overall was absolutely nuts. I mean, we did do the walking tour. We saw the Coliseum, all of that. But like the travel of it all was insane. Florence was much better, I will say. It was great. I felt like it was a way more relaxing trip. We did um, like a cooking class in Spain or in Florence. And we did like dinners in Florence. And then we did um, a wine tour our last day in Florence, which was the best time ever. We... um, had a little wine tour. We got broken up into groups and our group was all couples in their twenties, which was absolutely like perfect. I think they did that on purpose. They must have because that was just the perfect group. And we went to a couple of wineries. We went to like a farm where we pet cows. We saw like the beautiful hills of like Tuscany. Um, we went to like a small town and walked around and, um, had like an hour and a half there and did all these wine tastings and it was just like the best time ever our ride back was hilarious our driver basically we were in like a passenger like a 15 passenger van like the whole trip so he would just drive us from winery to winery and um, on our trip back he was playing some music and we were like you know what it was like 60s, 70s music. It was like the classics and I think he probably just does that for every group he has but we were like young and we we're like you know what let's just do you mind if we like cue some stuff up? So we put on like Nelly, Pitbull, Travis Porter, Drake. Like we had the best time. We were all bumping. He would like hit his brakes um, like during the beat. It was hilarious. We were like all dying. We loved it so much. And then pulling up to like our drop off spot is a roundabout outside of this cafe. And right before we had like pulled up, he was like, okay, we have to do one more song. And, um, it's very, very important that we do this song. And we were like, okay, yeah, 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 Daniel. Like his name is Daniel. Yeah, Daniel. So he puts the song on. It's the soaring flying song from high school musical. And we go around this roundabout during the course and it's like soaring fly, that whole thing. And he just kept going around the roundabout. He never got out of the roundabout. So he does it the whole time. And we're just losing our minds. It's so funny. All the windows are down. So everyone at these like little cafes are looking at us like, what the fuck is this man doing? And then he pulls up to park like right as the song ends. It was magic, pure magic. Daniel was the MVP of the day. So nice. Such a good tour, like tour guide. Um, And that was just like, oh, like I'm just never going to forget though that like that whole day, that whole trip. Um, it was a really good way to like end out and round out our trip in Italy. And then, yeah, we took some trains home, did like a 10 hour flight home. And, uh, it was a great time. It was just like, I have always wanted to go to Italy my whole entire life. Um, my mom's side is Italian. I've always just really loved, um, Italian culture, food, all of it. And I was like, you know what? One day when I'm old enough, like I'm going to go, I'm like, I'm going to make a trip And I'm so lucky that I got to go like already in life. Um, And so it was super special. And it was super special to be able to celebrate our friends and their marriage, um, to be with friends during like the whole travel of it all, make all these memories together. And then especially like to be with TJ and do all this with him was like amazing. So overall, 10 out of 10 trip. Um, We definitely want to go back though. We only got to go to Rome Florence and then Buccene, which is where they got married. But I would love to go back and do like Amalfi Coast and Venice and just like do a couple more spots. So we are already like saying that we need to go back. As soon as we like got home, we were like, we have to do that again. We have to go back. So um, maybe not in the next year or so, but definitely uh, have to have to end up back in Italy. It was amazing. 
Um, but yeah, and then came home and I turned 26. So uh, that was interesting. I think this is the first year, and I was telling my friends this, I think this is the first year that I didn't really get excited about my birthday. Um, I love other people's birthdays. I love celebrating people. I love making people feel special on their birthday, feel seen on their birthday. I think that's really important, especially when like you don't see them a lot. Or even if you do, sometimes it's like you see them too much and then things like this kind of just get like you're just going through the motions of it. But I think birthdays are really special and like it allows you to take time to really appreciate that person and show them that you love them. Um, and it's, I always say every year, like, oh, people are so nice, like on your birthday. Like you really hear like how people feel about you. You start to notice who's like really making an effort for you. Um, and then it's just nice. It's just nice to feel loved, you know? So I've always like really enjoyed my birthday. I think I always like to see all my favorite people in one place too. So like having like a celebration of some sort, it's always fun for me. Last year was the big two five. So I think I talked about this on the podcast last year, but we went to Charleston. I had a lot of my friends come in. We did an Airbnb. Um, it was literally the best time ever. I've never had more fun in my whole life. And I think why I had so much fun was literally what I just said. All of my favorite people were in the same place. Um, and I just think that's so fun. Like blending your friends is so fun, but yeah, I was talking to my friend this year and I said, I think this year was the first time I woke up and I wasn't excited for my birthday, which is, sounds very depressing. Um, and I've always heard about people like you wake up and you cry on your birthday. And I've always thought like, why? Like, that's really dramatic. Like, why are you depressed on like the day that you should be like the happiest? It's your birthday. And I don't, I'm not going to say that I get it. But I definitely had a feeling of like, I don't know. It's just like, it's just another day. And then I had the feeling of, I don't know. I can't explain it, but I just was in like a funk and I was in a funk the night before. And I think it like carried over into my birthday morning. And I just was like, yeah, well, I don't know. There's nothing like really going on. I'm not doing a big party. Like what's there to celebrate, right? And Quickly, I got out of that funk because I think seeing messages from your friends and your family and talking to people on the phone, it just gets you like, it's so, I don't know. It's just refreshing. It's nice to like hear from people. It's, um, I don't know, but it's, it's, it is weird. And I would love to talk to other people about how they feel about their birthdays because I, I would love to know like the science behind that. If there is like a reason that you wake up and you're like, ugh, like, is it because you feel older? Is it because you feel like, I don't know, irrelevant? I don't know what it is, but I am glad I got out of that funk shortly after I woke up because I think it just puts things in perspective too. Like I'm blessed to live another year. I am so grateful for the life that I have for the people in my life that I have. And I think hearing from those people is always so special. Um, and I don't know, I really enjoyed it. And then that day we had a little happy hour picnic. Um, my friends came and, um, it was really nice to like see them catch up, drink, celebrate. And then we came back to my apartment, drank some more, had some cake. Um, and it was a very like chill birthday night. And I really liked that. I think it was nice. I mean, Italy is kind of like, you can't really outdo Italy. And that was sort of my gift to myself, I guess. But it was really nice to like spend time with my friends and celebrate a little bit that night. So I'm excited for 26. I actually don't know. I just feel like every year I'm like, okay, this is going to be such a good year. And I I haven't really thought that about 26 because I haven't really thought about even turning 26 yet. And I don't think that sounds real, but I am excited for what's to come. Um, I'm excited to share some news with you guys in a couple of weeks and just like, I don't know. I'm excited for the podcast. I'm excited for season five, the guests I'm having on. Um, I'm excited to like continue to live where I'm at, build more relationships here, um, yeah, I don't know. I'm just, I'm excited because it's so unknown. And I think that's the fun of life is like, you just don't know what's to come. And I think that's so exciting. So 
looking forward to what 26 holds for me. But um, yeah, really quickly before um, we wrap up today's episode, though, I do want to talk about what's to come for the podcast. Um, If you guys have been here since the beginning, I started this podcast back in January of 2020, which is crazy. Um, I've absolutely loved doing this podcast and I feel like I've grown so much. I feel like the podcast itself has grown so much. Um, But I think at the core, the podcast is still the same, which I love. And a lot of you guys, if you guys follow me on Instagram, know that I'm a big pop culture girly and that I'm constantly posting pop culture news, um, breaking news, and anything Bravo Housewives related, just because that's what I really, really enjoy. Um, And... I feel like over the last couple of seasons, we've sort of lost the pop culture of it in the actual episodes itself. So I want to quickly, and I'm going to do an Instagram poll to see like what you guys truly would want to hear most and like what you guys would be interested in. But I would love to do mini pop culture episodes every week on top of the actual podcast. So say like my podcast typically come out every Wednesday morning um, you know, with a guest or just a solo episode like this one or whatever it may be, but that that's typically Wednesday. Would you guys be interested in having like a Monday mini pop culture recap episode? Or would you guys like another Wednesday episode? Or would you guys like a Friday episode? Um, again, I'm going to do a poll, a poll on my Instagram to give you guys, um, another chance to like respond. If you also just like want to message me, like reply to the story and just give me some feedback on that, let me know, like feel free to do that. Um, because I want to be able to like really talk about pop culture. It's something that I'm so passionate about and like I know so much about. Um, and I feel like that got lost a little bit in the actual episodes itself. We did last season do like a 15 minute, um, what was it? 15 or like the fast, I don't know. I did like some pop culture stories at the beginning of some episodes, but then again, like that got lost. So I don't know. Let me know what you guys want to hear. This podcast is for you guys. Um, and I want it to be enjoyable. So if you would prefer me just keep the pop culture part of it in the main episode, I can also do that. Um, so you're not having to like, I don't know, keep up with multiple, or if you would prefer multiple because you want more, episodes I'm happy to do it um I just want to know where to fit it in because like I want to do it um I want pop culture to be a part of this podcast in some way again um but yeah woo that was a long one I uh I'm just so excited for for the season of the podcast I'm so excited to be back I'm ready to just pump out all these episodes we have so many cool guests already coming on the show. I've already recorded so many episodes with amazing people already. So this is just going to be like a fiery season and I'm ready for it. Um, so if you haven't already follow me on girl, we got to talk podcast on Instagram. You can also follow on Facebook and, um, I need to start posting more on YouTube. So I'm going to be doing that this season as well. So feel free to just go subscribe now. So you get notified when the new episode is up. Um, But yeah, love you guys so much. Thank you guys again for being so patient. I am so happy to be back. Girl, we got to talk. It's back for season five and um, we'll talk next week. Bye. Hey guys, thanks so much for listening. Be sure to subscribe to Girl We Gotta Talk on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or anywhere you get your podcasts. That way you never miss a new episode. You can also follow Girl We Gotta Talk on Instagram at Girl We Gotta Talk Podcast and on Twitter at GWGT Podcast for live tweeting and all your favorite pop culture updates. If you want to watch full episodes, check out Girl We Gotta Talk on YouTube and find all of your favorite episodes over there. If you like today's episode, head over to Apple Podcasts, hit the five stars or leave a review and let me know what you thought. I seriously love hearing your feedback. It really means the world to me. Thank you guys again so much for listening. Talk to you guys next week. Bye.